Hello and good morning, friends. Today, I want to talk to you about measurements and charting when it comes to septic systems and why is it important? Let's get into it. So with septic systems, everybody kind of treats it as if it's something where once you put it in the ground, you're done. But in reality, that's not so much the case. And the reason why is the septic system is kind of its own living utility, right? You've got the tank and then you got your absorption system. So the basics of how these things work, the septic system is gonna have the solids get stuck in the tank. The tank's just a large concrete inert box. Sometimes there are more very advanced and innovative systems that have blowers, pumps, filters, all sorts of other stuff, but we're just gonna stick with the basic gravity-fed, normal, traditional septic system for this, for this argument, right? So we've got a tank big box captures the solids. Every toilet flush with all the solids will go into the tank, heavy stuff falls to the bottom, lighter stuff floats up top, and liquids in the middle. The baffle is going to prevent all of the scum from getting out of the tank. Now, with a septic system, unless you know that I produce four inches of solids a year for your septic system, you're not going to truly know how often to pump your tank, right? So pumping the tank, it's very important because it keeps the solids out of the absorption system, but unless you're measuring it, you don't know when the optimal pumping schedule is. And then you're relying on somebody who's a pumper who gets paid for pumping your tank. So can you truly trust that they've got your best interest and in, in heart? In most cases, I would say, at least in our area, all of our contractors are good contractors in the area. So I would say, yes, you can trust most of these guys. But there's going to be that one or two other little guys who are not going to play by the rules. And they're going to be a little bit uh, squirrely on the way that they do things, right? So you wanna make sure you have some way of measuring the tank. Now it's kind of gross, so most homeowners won't do this, but you could get a sludge judge and then you could physically measure the sludge yourself and you'd be able to see, okay, every year I'm putting in four inches of solids or I'm putting in eight inches of solids or I'm doing two inches of solids. In our area, we generally recommend 30% of the total volume is when you wanna pump it out, right? So if you've got 60 inches of, of total liquid, once you start getting to about 16 to 20 inches of solids, now nah, it's time to pump it. The reason why is you got to worry about solids working their way into the drain fields and causing clogs and issues, right? We don't want to, we don't want to deal with that. But if you're not measuring, you're not going to know, right? So optimally, you would measure it every year, pick the first of June or whatever day you want and just keep measuring every single year on that mark. And that'll help you figure out exactly when your optimal pumping schedule is. I generally will recommend a family of four should do it every two or three years, add six months uh, for every person that leaves the house subtract six months for every person who enters the home on a permanent basis. If you got guests coming and going, it doesn't matter. If they're there for a week or two, it, it, it's not gonna hurt nothing. Where it's more important to keep track of your numbers is gonna be when you have an older septic system that has what's called a dry well, right? So dry wells, at least in our area, were the absorption system used between 1950 and like 1985. Some counties a little bit different, depends on where you're at. Sometimes you get tile fields, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get seepage pit or seepage beds, but most commonly in that time period is where you're going to see pits, right? These are the easiest to measure. You can measure all the other ones, but it gets far more complicated and is a little bit less approachable for a homeowner. But it's a seepage pit, right? Big, uh, big box or big hole in the ground, essentially, with dry stack cinder block and stone on the exterior and a big fat thick lid on top. Generally speaking, in our area, they're going to be about six feet to eight feet diameter, six to ten feet deep. And that's just going to be a giant hole in the ground. As you introduce water into the septic tank, the solids will fall out, right? Like we just talked, but the liquid's got to go somewhere. So if you put 10 gallons of water into the tank, 10 gallons are going to overflow into the pit. Now, the reason they dry stack these cinder blocks is so that way the water's got somewhere to move. Cinder block inherently is porous. So as the water goes in, it'll work its way through the cracks, through the cinder block itself. The stone on the outside of that block actually opens up the soil to let the water have some space to move. Now, over time, a little bit of biomat, that debris, the sludge, is gonna work its way into the, into the pit and kind of plug it up. The term biomat is the term that we use in the industry for biologic material. It's just poo, right? It's real sticky, tar-like. What'll happen is no matter what you do, you take care of that tank perfectly, a little bit of that debris will work its way into the pit, plug it up, and eventually it'll start to start to hold water until eventually it's so saturated it's got nowhere else to go. Now, it's it's very case by case to see how fa how fast it's filling up. Same thing with your septic system when pumping, right? 
on average, an, a, a pit should last 30 to 40 years at max occupancy. So if you've got a three bedroom home, your occupancy, occupancy design six people. So if you've got six people living in that house for 30 ish ish years, you would expect that septic system to fail. Doesn't always end up working out that way. I would say on average, you're probably closer to 40 to 50 years of service life, sometimes even more, right? Now, let's just say you have 10 feet of total depth for easy math, right? If you measure every single year and you know that you lose a foot of space to liquid, now you know that your drywall's got about 10 years of, of service life until it's time to replace or go down any other routes of repair, right? If you don't track it, you're never gonna know. Most of our drywells in our areas are gonna have a clean out. If your drywall does not have a clean out, you're gonna wanna make sure you get one installed because that's how you're gonna do this measurement, right? So the clean out is just gonna be about a, a six, a, between four to six inch pipe that's on top of the, uh, the pit, right? In our area, most commonly you'll see a six inch pipe. But you got this pipe, you open it up and basically it's gonna be a straight shot into the tank or into the pit and you're gonna be able to see what you're working with. The goal of this clean out is to allow you as the homeowner to be able to see what's happening inside of that pit. So if you open this pit up, you're gonna be able to see the top of the top of the pit and the top of the water. What you should do is you should get a, a tape measure and if you're grossed out about it, you should probably just go to Home Depot, buy a $10 one or a $15 one, you could even go to the, the dollar store and get a cheapy dollar one. Those usually don't have enough tape to actually measure the pit. You probably wanna get something that's 10 foot plus in the total length, right? So you measure now. The way that I like to measure it or tell homeowners to measure it, measure from the top of that clean out to the top of that water, right? It's not as accurate of a measurement because it won't tell you how much actual space is in there, but it's very simple and very easy for homeowners to do. So you measure down. Let's just say that out of that 10 foot, you measure that there is going to be about eight, eight feet from the top of that clean out to the top of that water. Now, that might mean that you have two or three feet of water in that pit. That's okay. You still got space. So what you'll do is you'll take that measurement, write it down, put it on a chart, write it on the wall of the garage, or just put it somewhere so you don't forget that number. You go back out next year, you measure it again, and let's say now it's seven feet. Now you know it's it's an eight or a one foot drop per year. Usually it's not as dramatic as a one foot incline, right? So if you ha if you lose a foot of space in one year, that either means that somebody had pumped it out previously, right? Let's just say that it failed, you pump it, and then it fills back up. They don't usually fill that fast. I would say usually you're between two to six inches of increase every year. But, so you write that down. Next year you do it again. Let's just say now you get two foot of, of loss in that system. Well, now you gotta figure out, all right, so what, what, what changed? Was maybe there were more rain? Maybe groundwater's influencing it. Did you have more people living in the house? Did you change some way of like maybe your pumping schedule? There's a, a variety of things that could be happening, but if you're not writing down those measurements, if you're not keeping track of it, you're gonna have a far harder time to know when things are gonna go wrong. The reason I recommend to measure this, even as a homeowner, and if you're grossed out, you can always hire somebody to measure it for you, but it's, it's really not that hard to do. Um, you just wash your hands when you get done, right? So the reason you wanna do this, septic systems are very expensive to replace. In our area, generally you're looking between six to $9,000 per trench in, to, get, to get a new one installed. And most homes require two, maybe three trenches. Depends on the perk rate, depends on the house, situation, site conditions, all that good stuff. But good ballpark, right? So let's just say that it's, it's 15 grand to put in a new, a new drain field system. So if you measure and you know that you've got four years worth of space left in that system, now, rather than getting hit with a $15,000 bill out of nowhere that you were not prepared for, now you can start saving for it or you can start coming up with a, a financial plan of how am I gonna pay for this to get it dealt with? Or maybe you can start trying to figure out some of the more experimental, not quite as kosher uh, repair strategies. There are some strategies that are out there. They're just not recognized as a repair by the state yet. That doesn't mean that they don't work. It just means there's not enough data to prove that that method actually does what it says it's supposed to do. So the benefit of keeping track of how many solids are in your septic tank, it makes it to where now you're not spending as much money on pumping. You're able to get far more dialed in and efficient and how often you pump your tank. So that means you save money and you make sure that you're not letting solids get into the sep or into the absorption system. By measuring your dry well, you're able to save money because now you know how much life you have left in that system, right? 
So that way you don't get stuck with a, a bill that you weren't expecting. I would say that probably 90 to 95% of homeowners have never looked inside of their pit. Every time I pop it open, they're like, oh, would you look at that? Or, oh, I didn't know there was that much water in there. If you don't look, you don't know. And if you're not taking measurements, you're just basically flying in the dark. You can do that if you want. It's just I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. So in recap, measure your solids, measure your dry well. If you don't want to do the solids, it's not that big of a deal. Pumping's not that crazy. So you can get away with not doing that. Just let the pumper pump it and tell you, should I have waited a year? Should I do it a little bit more often? They'll usually tell you how many solids are in the tank. 30% is your magic number, right? So if they tell you that you had five feet of liquid with 24 inches of solids, that means you went well above the 30%, you got to pump more often, right? With the pits, uh, most, most contractors won't measure that. You could always ask, but they should, right? But some of them won't you want to make sure you keep on track on top of that because that's the expensive part right so if you don't do the tank make sure you're doing the pit because that's the expensive part to replace and it's it's way easier to go into that repair knowing roughly how much longer you have left until you have to deal with that right at that point you could try and find some other kind of funding source whether it be a grant or whatever right I hope that this brought a little bit of value to you. If you appreciate this kind of information, if you want to learn more, please hit that like button and subscribe. I have more videos every day posted on the world of well and septic. If there's an area of conversation or a topic you'd like me to discuss, please leave a comment below. I try to get to all of them as fast as I can. Sometimes it's easier than others, but I'm here to help you all learn and maybe we can have a good conversation about something that's going on in your area. Till next time, guys.